And I'm gonna make people upset. Do I care? No, I don't. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I, did I start rough? First and foremost, don't go around talking about things like that, way, Nah. Hey, Linda, then that's not the person for you. <laughs> and they could be wonderful people in real life as soon as they step out of their car. And with the men, oh my God. That's fine. I, I never... I never... I understand. No. Walk in with something. Problem and you have you have um romanticized toxicity in relationships no then you are together lina you understand limo mandatory Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is I, it is just Katleo. It's Katleo Malela. Thank you so much for being here today. We are bringing back one I haven't done in a while. And I'm going to make people upset. Do I care? No, I don't. <laughs> it's all in good fun. Welcome back to another video. It is me, it is I, it is Katleo Malela. Thank you so much for being here. As always, thank you for choosing me over and over again. If you do enjoy the content on this channel, please do subscribe to the channel, watch all the ads, and maybe join the membership space. If this is a space where you feel like you want to get to know me a little bit more, there are a lot of videos in the membership space. Definitely join in in the membership space. Today we are doing <laughs> we are filming another unpopular opinions i'm bringing it back i haven't done it in such a long time i was just like you know what it's time it's time to do a bit of dragging okay it's time to do a bit of you know get, just, let's just upset people a little bit you know what i'm saying <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much for being here. Let's get started into the first unpopular opinions. If you do love the unpopular opinions videos, please watch them all, like them, watch the ads, re-watch them. I would love it. It supports the channel so much and I would love if you could do that for me. So let's get started on the first unpopular opinion, okay? This one, this one, this one's gonna upset a number of people. This one's going to upset Boma Sabata, Bolinda, and Dipu is gonna be very upset about this, and Sentia as well. I can feel it. I can feel it. Going onto social media to brag and talk about what you won't do for a man. You would never be caught dead doing for a man. You would never be caught dead doing this or doing that or buying them this or flying them there or doing this for them. Is the exact reason why you don't have one. Wait a damn minute. <laughs> Hear me out, hear me out. Going on social media to brag about things like that is not cute. To talk about how you would never do this, men should be doing this, blah, blah, blah. I would never do this for a partner, I would never do this, is the exact reason why you will not get one. First and foremost, don't go around talking about things like that. Way. Nah, hey, Linda, don't go around talking about things like that online and preaching about things like that. That's not cute. It's not a good look. It's not going to look good for you. And that's one of the reasons why you ain't going to get them. Because you know why? People do things for their partners. Whether it's a man or a woman or a they, them, listen, whatever, wherever they may be falling on the spectrum, okay, of genders and society and sexuality, people do things for the people that they care about, especially if they love them. So if if you are gonna go around talking to the people on the streets and then saying that oh no I would never oh catch me dead catch me outside catch me two streets away doing this for a man is the exact reason why you don't have one and it's the exact reason why you're going to struggle to get one because that's not how life works but I'm sorry did I, did I start rough <laughs> did I start rough I'm sorry 
I'm sorry. I mean, I'm not sorry, but you know, another one about relationships. Okay. <sighs> okay. This is going to be a big one. Another one about relationships. If you are going to walk into each and every single relationship or work on getting into a relationship with somebody, but expecting them to consistently prove themselves to you so much so that they need to jump through hoops. They need to walk on fire stones. They need to walk on cold stones full of fire. That's what I mean. Full of fire. You know what I'm doing? I'm talking to you, Mbali. I'm talking to you. If you are going to walk into relationships constantly expecting people to jump hoops to be with you just because you want to be able to call them your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your partner or whatever, if you are going to make them jump through hoops and walk on coal fired stones, that is childish. It's childish. Because the reality of life is. And focus here, Chief. The reality of life is people have gone through all of it. People have been heartbroken. You've been heartbroken. People have been hurt. You've been hurt. People have gone through traumas. You've gone through traumas. But if you're going to expect somebody to come to you already high on emotional intelligence, proving their worth to you by buying you things and, and ticking all of the boxes and making sure that they jump through hoops just so that you can call them their boyfriend, your boyfriend, or your girlfriend? Absolutely not. It's quite childish. I think you need to just let things flow. You need to let things just happen. And if you learn a thing or two along the way and you realize that this is not the person for me, then that's not the person for you. But for you to expect people to constantly jump hoops to be with you or walk through fire to be with you, bye, bye. That's not realistic. Stop. Just, this is another one. BMW drivers are the most disrespectful people on the road. And I'm talking in specific to Salva. BMW drivers are the most Oh my God, they're, they're the most disrespectful people in the, on the road, on the road. BMW drivers are the most, have you noticed those people? And they could be wonderful people in real life. As soon as they step out of their car, they're wonderful people. But the moment they get into their car and they get onto a freeway, shame. Whether she is driving a one series, whether she's driving a three series, M4, M6, whatever it may be, whether it's a demo model, whether it's a starter pack in the range, in the series, BMW drivers are so disrespectful. Listen, they will come up to you like this on the freeway. Bobby Lebo flick LED lights. I don't know many drivers that flick lights, except BMW drivers. Most of the time, when I'm driving casually on the freeway and I'm pushing my 120, 130, 160, <laughs> if I'm pushing, I'm pushing. If a car comes up behind me and this car is flicking their lights at me, it's high chances it's a BMW driver. That's the thing. Nyatelela Nina and in Funuchelo every day, every day, BMW drivers are so disrespectful. Speaking of the car thing, I just feel the brand Haval, the brand Haval should be driven strictly by women. Just something looks wrong when you see a Sbusiso driving a, a Haval. I, it's just, it's just for me. This, this is what I'm saying. So cock. Okay, if you see a Sbusiso, Tabo, Tepiso, Tabang, you know, a John, you know, if you see a John, a Steven driving a Haval, no, man, no. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. I just feel like Haval cars are better off for women. They should be driven just by women. And I typically don't feel that way about cars, okay? I feel like whoever, sh whoever, sh whomever should be able to drive whatever car they want to drive. But I genuinely feel that Haval cars should be driven by women. There's something just, it says woman. It doesn't say man, man. I, when I see a man and I'm just like, mm-mm. Uh, here's another one. 
Women spend money on men. They're just quieter about it. Then you can... Mm. It makes sense! The, the, they don't make noise. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. When you love your person, a lot of women who love their people, who love their partners, who love their relationships, blah, 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 they spend money on their partners. Much like men do, men just like to be loud about it. Men like to be boisterous about it. They want to show the whole world that they did this, that, and the other for their partner. They bought them this. They took them to Diamond Walk, Platinum Walk. They did this for them. They put them in a G6. They bought them a, a Range Rover Velar. They did this, that, and the other. And they want the whole world to know. Women do the exact same thing. They just do it very quietly. We don't make noise. Mm? We just buy them that nice thing, but we do not make a noise. Because why? I, I don't need to make a noise about the fact that I spoils me my zmanians. I don't need to make a noise about it. He knows about it. And he's the only person who should know about it. Why should y'all know about it? No. But then if he spoils me, y'all gonna know about it. <laughs> Badly or speaking ill of corporate jobs and people who have corporate jobs doesn't make you any better. Just because you are a creative, just because you don't have to go into the office, but for you to sit there and say, Wushem, you could never catch me dead, catch me outside, catch me two streets away, sitting in a nine to five office desk work job, speaking ill of people who have corporate jobs or who go to corporate jobs and have nine to fives does not make you any better. And for SARS. Does not make your job any better. Does not make it look any nicer just because you get to wake up at nine o'clock, 10 o'clock every day and work some days and not work other days. What is going on? There's just a lot of sounds. There's this, this, like, it just doesn't make you any better. You hear my chat? It just doesn't make you any better. So stop. Don't do that. I don't know. I just, I find it to be such a huge ick to see somebody speaking ill or speaking negatively or badly of people who have corporate jobs or corporate jobs in general who go to work, badule desking from nine to five and be in and out of meetings in a corporate space. No. Just because you're a creative and you get to live the life that you want to live. Some people actually really like corporate jobs. So, makes them more disciplined, they feel more comfortable having to leave the house and go and sit at their desk from nine till five. It's okay, they like that. Mm. So Here's another one. As a grown up, as an adult, and I think all of us here watching this are adults. Exactly, sharp. As a grown up and as an adult, the sentiment or the term or the the, the, the sentence that says respecting your elders, there's a very fine line there. I am very sorry there's a fine line with the term respect your elders because what you're not going to do yes. as an elder, just because when you are 50 something or 60 something, when I'm the adi, and I, I respect him that they are there. I've told you guys, I respect him that they are there, but that they are there must not come to me sideways. Even though they are older than you, and I hear that chat, there's no one who hears that chat more than me, and I believe in respecting people who are older than you, but I but do I also believe that respect them if they give you the same respect, if they treat you the same way. If you're gonna come at me sideways, you're gonna get me sideways, you know what I'm saying? If you're gonna come at me correct, you're gonna get me correct. But just because or Joseph and your daughter is a best friend of mine, but then you feel the need to disrespect me, and now I need to respect you because you're 70 something. Absolutely not. But you can go around and disrespect me and judge me, judge what I'm wearing. Why are you wearing this? Hey, Luna, but these days, Luna, but these days, Hale, I'm sorry. Keep saying that. That's great. Keep saying it. Just keep saying it. Keep saying it out loud. Just because you see how I'm dressed, suddenly these days, I'm not going to respect you. Come at me correct and you will be addressed correctly with respect. But come at me sideways, let's go. Bets are off, let's go, let's go.
go. I'm just okay. Okay. To the girls and guysies who watched the show Girlfriends. Do you remember it? With Joan and Tony, right, right, and Lynn and them. Yeah, you remember that show? Let me tell you something about Joan. Joan, now that I've watched Girlfriends, when I'm older, now that I've watched it, Joan wasn't a girl's girl. Ah, eh, man. Ah, eh, man. Tung, ah, eh, man. Ah, eh. Ay, 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 ay. She really was not a girl's girl. Now that I watch it, I realize that Joan was a pygmisha. Joan was a pygmisha. Joan had an issue with competing against her friends. She was never really happy for her friends. There was always something. She would make it about herself. She would make it about her. If her friends were doing well, if Tony was doing well and Tony was getting married, she found a way to make it about herself and not be happy and wonder how, why her life isn't going the same way. That's what she wanted, blah, blah, blah. And with the men, oh my God. God. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you learn something from this? No, absolutely not. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. If your favorite character was Joan in Girlfriends, I don't know. I don't know much about that. I don't know much about her. <laughs> you know nothing about that. You know nothing about that. Uh, you know not Listen, I don't know much about that if you were a fan of Joan. Because Joan was a problematic hun. And I think we can both, all, all of us here, I think all of us can actually testify and say that Joan was a pygmisha. Joan wasn't the hun that we thought she was. Joan wasn't the hun that we wanted her to be. Period. Point blank. Some of y'all are going to come for me with this one and that's fine. That's fine. Let's go for it. Okay. Especially when Linda. Let's go for it. If you are going to invite your friends to your birthday dinner or your birthday lunch or your birthday celebration, you should be covering the bill. Why? And hear me out. Hear me out. Hear me out. Okay? You should be covering the bill. If you're going to invite people over, and I'm not saying the entire bill, hear my chat, you should be covering the bill and saying, listen, I'm covering one meal, two cocktails. That's it. If people want to have more than that, then that's fine. That's fine. I, I never... I never... I never... I never... I No. But if you are going to invite somebody over to celebrate your birthday at Orem or at Jamel mm, or at Jameli or at whatever, at Acti George's, wherever it is that you like, what, whatever, big mouth. If you are going to invite people over to celebrate your birthday at a restaurant, especially, you should be footing the bill. <laughs> I can go to IT. I can go to IT. <sighs> It feels so good to get that out. Woo. <laughs> you should be footing the bill. And when I mean foot the bill, I mean account for one main meal and maybe two cocktails. That's it. After that, it's all on them. The tab is on them. Your friends, like, for instance, me. I'm a whiskey drinker. I know that when I get there, I'm, I'm not crazy about cocktails. So typically what I will do, I'll speak to the waiter on the side. I'll be like, listen, open up a separate bill just for me where I will be drinking this so that it's not part of, I might open up with one cocktail, you know, might have me an old fashioned, you know, might have me a Negroni, you know what I'm saying? The, the bitter stuff. That's, that's what I drink. I might have me some of that. But if you're going to invite people to your birthday party, you should foot the bill. And what should be mandatory for the people who are going to come to the birthday party, you should come with a gift. Yeah? How's that gift? You are not allowed. You are not allowed inside these here premises. Mm. Yes, yes. How's that gift? You are not allowed in these here premises, my doll. That's how it should be. But expecting people to come to your birthday party and then pay for everything on top of the fact that they must get you a gift or, or, or rather you would like for them to get you a gift by. I mean, uh... 
I'm in, I'm in, I'm in. Bye, 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 bye. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Lena. In the same aspect, another unpopular opinion. If somebody is going to invite you to their home for a braai, where they will be catering to everything, they are giving you lodging, they are giving you food, yeah, understand that they are giving you a music. Wena, wena, wena tepisu. Ditebo, wena. Don't think I've forgotten you. They are giving you food, a lodging, and they are also giving you ambience, atmosphere, meeting other people, and music. The least you could do is walk in with a gift. Yes. Something. Walk in with a bottle of wine. Walk in with a bottle of whiskey. Walk in with a salad. Not that they have to ask you. You don't have to ask them. Walk in with something. Problem is you don't have to ask them. You don't have to ask them. That is the problem. You don't have to ask them. Just listen. Just want, want, want. You don't have to ask them. Don't do that. Don't do that. Have a little bit of etiquette. Lipi is more the real housewives of Salt Lake City, New York, Depene, what what don't you realize that every time somebody gets invited to somebody else's house, they come with something? Flowers, an orchid. Let's see if your friend can keep an orchid alive, because that shit is so hard. Even I struggle with that sometimes. Okay, and I have got plant fingers. Okay, I've got green fingers. But girl, just do the right thing. Lorella expected in Tony Mahala most of the time. Especially when you come into somebody else's house. No, bro. And no. here's another thing. If you're gonna be showing nice living on your social media, on Instagram, on the Yukyop, on the you know, you are traveling, on TikTok, you're traveling, you're eating out nice restaurants, living your lavish life, and you owe me money. People who owe people money shouldn't be showing these kinds of things. You shouldn't be living and kicking and laughing and showing all your teeth when you know you owe me 500 bucks, bro. You owe me 500 bucks. How are you sitting at Orem by yourself just having a casual nice lunch when you know you owe me 20 bucks, bro? <laughs> Oram, at least for one person, at least dependent on what you're eating, you're going to spend anywhere between 500, 700 rand, even a thousand bucks, depending on the cocktails you're having. And now you're sitting here living your lavish life when you know you owe me 200 bucks, bro. Masawata, I'm speaking to you. <laughs> mm -hmm. This one was a drag for your ass. <laughs> you cannot. It's rude. It's distasteful. Yeah, you, you can't just be going around living, kicking, being happy, living lavish, knowing very well who you owe me money, bro. Nah, bro. That's not how it works. No, no, no. Give me my money. Give me my money. Show me my money. I want it. <laughs> I... Nah, bro. Mm. I like this one. This one people might disagree with, but that's why it's an unpopular opinion. I prefer the Rihanna now as a businesswoman than I did in her musical days. <laughs> I don't care for a Rihanna album. I really don't. I don't have the diamonds in the sky. It's fine. We loved it. We enjoyed it, you know, step on the replay. You know, we loved it. We loved the stay. We loved the thugs. It's fine. But I prefer Rihanna as a, a businesswoman, as a multimillionaire mogul, as a billionaire mogul. I follow Rihanna more now than I ever have. I love to see how she's grown into a businesswoman, but also a mother and a wife. She's a wife. Are they married? I don't know. But I love to see her more now. I find her to be aging so gracefully, so beautiful, but actually her business sense is savvy. She just recent, recently launched Fenty Hair, my boy, and she had the blow. And I was just like, yes! Mm. And I just love seeing her succeed as a businesswoman. I don't care for her music. 
Nah. If you guys are waiting for a music, you won't wait a long time. I think Rihanna's done with that. Girl, shut up. You are making things worse. And I think she made an announcement that uh, me, I'm done. Hey, with the music, I think I'm done. <laughs> you guys, some of you guys, some of you guys, did they Listen. Some of you guys love to go off on the baddies. You love to hate on the baddies, especially the baddies that date rich men or politicians and get access to all these love thing these lovely expensive things, gifts, cars, trips overseas, expensive luxury brand things and all of that. Y'all love to hate on them. You know why? Because there's a smidgen part of you that's jealous. You know I'm right. You know I'm right. There's a smidgen part of you that is just, oh, you are living, you are eating it. The green-eyed monster is not even, it's not even a light green. This one, it's army green. The, the green has been just, it's just, it's, it's, it's sitting with mold and moss. It's dark because you, the, your heart, there's a part, a small smidgen part of your heart that is dark with jealousy. <laughs> you know you jealous, girl. You know you jealous. Why why are you even like? Why are you even like? You know you a relationship that hardly has any disagreements or fights. And hear my chat? I said hardly. Cynthia, please English, ne? Please. Relationships that hardly Meaning that they happen, but hardly, right? Relationships that hardly have any fights, disagreements, any riffraff, any toxicity are not boring. They're healthy. They're healthy. That's what you should be looking for when you look for a relationship you can have the disagreements here and there but they do not form the fundamental basis and foundation of your relationship the problem is some of you have have glorified and you have you have um romanticized toxicity in relationships no no you like i love him even though last week you were bashing in his car windows <sighs> Today, I'm coming here for you. It's in Taulele. Last week, you were slashing his tires. Last week, you were breaking the windows of his house because you were mad at something. But to tomorrow, you're going to say that oh, but, but, we love each other. Yeah, we're a little bit toxic, but we love each other. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah. Healthy relationships to the outside world may look like they're boring, but they're not. They're healthy. That's not you and Sposiso, is it? Yeah, you know now. You're seeing it now that, hey, hey me and Sposiso, we're not like that. We don't move like that. That's okay, Lolo. Don't keep saying that you're bad at responding to people's messages or getting back at people when they call you. Don't say, oh, you know, I'm just really, really bad at it. No, just tell it like it is. You don't care to. You don't care for those people. Not like that. You don't care for them because the people that you do care for, you're going to respond immediately. Don't use the excuse, you know, I'm just bad. I'm just really bad at responding to messages. I'm just really bad at responding to ABCs. That, uh, stop. Stop. You're lying. You're lying. And we know that you're lying, so don't do that. Just rather tell the truth and be like, you know what? I just don't care for them that much. I just don't care for them that much. And it just, just, it just, it just, it just be like that sometimes. <laughs> I'm dragging some of my friends. I'm dragging some people that I know on a personal basis because I can. And this is my channel. It's my channel. Social media content creators, influencers have literally ignited 
the lifestyle of overconsumption. It's because of social media content creators, especially in the lifestyle and in the beauty space. They have ignited the unhealthy way of living, which is overconsumption. Because of them, now you want three of the same lip gloss. Because of them, now you want four of the same t-shirt. Because of them, now you want to be traveling over and over again. Listen, you're spending more time in a plane than you are in your own house. Because so-and-so is doing this. Even though you had the money before you watched so-and-so, you never used to live like that. Social media influencers have encouraged a life of overconsumption. Thus, in turn, putting people into debt. Credit cards. Mm. You saw it on Naledi's channel. Yeah? You saw that Naledi bought this wig. Kokai Kai. Then two weeks later, she bought this wig. Kokai Kai. Then two weeks later, she bought this wig. You think Naledi bought that wig. Some she may have bought, but some she may have been gifted. But because Naledi is always wearing a different wig all the time, I want to look like Naledi M. Official. Now you're sitting and drowning in credit card debt. Social media content creators, do not fall for the trap. Don't Listen, I think this is going to be my final one. Tipping petrol attendants should be standard. This should be mandatory. Those people are glorious. And I'm speaking in the South African context. Yabanobo Abuti, Bakobo Engine, Bakobo Sasoli, Bakobo Caltex. Every time you meet those people, they're happy. They're happy go lucky, they're chirpy, they're cheerful, they literally brighten up your day. Tipping petrol attendance should be mandatory. This is something that you should do just general. 20, 10 yana, just throw in something yana, because those people brighten up our days, let's not even lie, and I genuinely feel like you should tip them more than you tip the waza waza, my sister, waza waza, the car guards, nah bro, nah bro, tip those ones if you want to, it's fine, but petrol attendants, I mean, you don't fill up your petrol every day, do you? No, but you could go to the mall every day. You could be going into a parking uh, garage every single day and you could see park parking attendants. Yeah, that's fine. But however, what I'm saying is tipping petrol attendants should be mandatory. Those people are glorious. They're just wonderful. They're fun to be around. They're graceful. They're happy. They brighten up your day. Some points you're rocking up there, playing your yanos in the car. Then they're dancing with you. Then you're together. Lina, you understand? Limo. Mandatory. Right. I'm going to end it off here. I'm going to end it off here. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, like, subscribe, watch all the ads. I'll see you very, very soon. I'm flashing. I'll see you soon, soon, soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate you over and over and over again. Until then, sayonara.